What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for yet another Tottenham update. We've got Brian Daigle in the studio. How are we doing, Brian? We are doing good, and we are Tottenham on tour. Uh, TV is back up. It's and back running. up and running. Back up and running. We've got um, a few things to get through today, uh, which I want to get your opinion on. And let's start off talking about Eric Dyer, a report from Paul O'Keefe. And he says, Tottenham do not plan on looking for a centre-back upgrade in the January transfer window. And Antonio Conte wants Tottenham to offer Eric Dyer a new contract. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, we're still in pantomime season, so... Uh... Let's have some pantomime things going on. I just honestly, I, I don't understand this. I, I, I maybe understand and can get on board with uh, Di being a squad player and bringing in someone to, to be uh, ahead of him. But to say we don't need a central defender and to offer him a new contract shows the state we're in in defence. Yeah, I mean, it really does. And when it when it's, when it's he's saying, uh, Paul O'Keefe is saying, Antonio Conte wants Eric Dyer to be signed down to a new contract... I mean, I can get it coming from the hierarchy and stuff like that, but from Antonio Conte, when he sees them week in, week out, he's seen the mistakes that Dyer's making week in, week out. I've said it before that, I mean, I'm happy for Dyer to stay as a squad member. Um, I'm happy to stay as a backup, but he cannot be first choice defender anymore. He just cannot. I mean, he's gone from being a backup under Poch to <laughs> Jose Mourinho, like, tearing him a new one, to now... Um, Antonio Conte wants him to stay. I just don't get it. Joe, you know, the way I've been looking at this right now is Antonio Conte has managed Juventus, Chelsea, Inter Milan and Italy. And we all know about Italy and their central mm. defenders and the, and the pure quality that they breed, uh, breed uh, develop time after time. I cannot see him s looking back and going, do you know what? I've worked with all these defenders and I think Eric Dyer is of the same calibre that needs a new contract. I can do wonders with him. I refuse to believe it. He may be wanting to keep him because that's all he's got kind of thing, but I just cannot see Antonio Conte saying, I don't need help for him. I don't need alternatives. Extend that man's contract. I can't see it. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of agree. But, you know, Antonio Conte did go on record to say that he reckons he can make Eric Dyer a world-class defender. <laughs> Um, if he if he does actually believe that, maybe there is some legs to this, and maybe it is true. So one thing I will say about Eric Dyer, and let's not let's not get this wrong. Uh, last season he was incredible. He did the job tremendously. Um, we could, in, in fact, I thought at times last season Dyer was a bigger blow for us out than when Romero was out. Yeah, it's true. Um, and I'll give credit for that. I also thought when Pochettino had him, he played defensive midfield that season for one season. Yeah, yeah he was a breath of fresh air. But he seems to do it in, in periods of time. And then in between those periods of time, it's just mistakes that cost us, errors, poor performances. And he was do for me, he was actually doing really well until he got his England call up. And then he got put back in the limelight. I'm an England international. And it's fallen off a cliff again. Yeah, I, c I completely agree. I really do completely agree. And, and like I said before, I can kind of understand offering Dyer a new contract but I can't understand um, not wanting defensive upgrades because I've said it so many times so many times I really do not think Spurs in terms of where the squad is is that I don't think we're that far away and I think if we were to upgrade the defense upgrade that right wing back slot and um, and get an, another attacking player in there I think we will look so much different. We'll look like a proper outfit. And it's the defence which is letting us down week in, week out. We're scoring enough goals. We're scoring loads of goals. It's just the defence every week that is costing us. And Eric Dyer is a massive part of that. Yeah, I mean, what, what I'd say to you is right now, Eric Dyer doesn't get into the starting team of the top six. Probably not top eight. Uh, Does any of our defenders, apart from Romero, none of our defenders no, get no, in the top you're, 16. You're, 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 but that's the thing. That's the state we're in. And I, I, I've said on countless of times... If we just really beef up our defence with quality and don't even touch midfield and attack, I will come on here and everyone go like, absolutely delighted with what we've done because we can clearly see that is the issue. Mm. Clearly, like you said, we, we're scoring the goals to come back because of the mistakes we're making. It clearly needs work and I refuse to believe that Eric Dyer is the answer. Yeah, agreed. 
Um, but look, if, if you are listening, someone out there, some decision maker, just get some defenders in for us, please. Uh, but let's move on. Let's talk about Frank Kessier. Uh, Alfredo Martinez, who is a tier one Barcelona source, says that Tottenham have offered 15 million euros for Frank Kessier. However, Javi wants the player to stay and he wants to stay as well. But <laughs> Barca do need the money to renew Balde and register the renewals of Gavi and Arujo. So when you're looking at those players, Arujo, um, a very central player for them at the back now. Gavi, star yep. of the World Cup, and he's going to be um, a shining light in that Barcelona team for many a year to come. Balde as well, um, um, he's going to be uh, one for the future at Barca too. So, having said that, if, it, if it's true that they do need to sell um, someone to get these players on board, do you think there's a case that he could leave Barcelona? So, first of all, I, I will say, and I've seen a lot of people say this on Twitter as well, I find this no coincidence that the heat has been fully ramped up on Levy and the board, and all of a sudden we've made a bid for someone. All of a sudden, and it's it's deflecting tactics. Listen, you, you, you and me have been speaking about him a lot today, and you speak incredibly highly of him. I haven't seen uh, enough of him to say I can put a, a fair comment. But if he's as good as what you're saying, then I would love him at the club, even though we've just said defenders are more important. But like, there's players like regular. You know, it's like regular and we weren't going for a left back, but this guy came up. If he could make the impact that you're, you're, you're saying and other people are saying, then I'd, I, I would love to see him in the club. But I, I, I just can't see it happening. When you see that Bas want him to stay and everything he said... I think this has got, like last season with Adama Traore, mm. this is going to be dragging on and then nothing happened. If it is a case of Barca need to get rid of him and um, he's available on the cheap, because remember, Barca only signed him on a free transfer yep. in the summer uh, where we were linked with him as well. It is a no-brainer. I know, I know that midfield is not our key priority right now, but having said that, with the likes of Pape Matassar um, potentially going out the door yep. this January, with the likes of... Um, who we have through the door, Skippy as well. We heard something that Conte look, wants to upgrade on him. So let's say those two players do leave on loan in January, which I don't know about Skip, but it's a high chance Papi Matasar does go, yep. which will leave us with Ben Tancor, um, Hoybier and Bissouma, yep. right? So another one will need to come in if those two go out the door. And if that one is Kessier, to have a midfield four of those four players, it will be an unbelievable uh, foursome to have. And I think that Frank Kessier will come in as number one as well. He'll be the best midfielder that we have at the club. And in that 3-4-3 formation, to have a Kessier and a Bentancor in that middle of the park in a 3-4-3, I think it would be insane. And I think they would complement each other so well. But yeah, like you, I am very obviously very sceptical um, of this report. And if he does come in, I, I don't think it will happen. I think he'll stay at Barcelona because they only just signed him in the summer and it doesn't rate too much sense. But... If it is a situation that they do need to sell and and we're a good option for him, then I will take him with absolute open arms. I think he's a top, top, top quality player. And like I said before, he'll come in as our best midfielder. So, so what I will say uh, with this as well, and I hadn't thought of this when we were speaking about this as well, when you said but the potential of a skip, which is a, 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 a real big shot, or the, the more obvious one, Matasar goes out on loan, we definitely need to bring another person in. There's, there's no question about that. That needs to be uh, sorted so we have a four again. And like you said, for this deal and the way you are talking about him, like literally you are glowing when you speak about him with excitement and everything. <laughs> uh, the, the one thing I would ask you, if he was to come in the 15, I'm sure he's going to be on big, big wages mm. at Barca. He is, yeah. And I, I don't know if we'd go to the extreme or what his wage is. But, but like you said, by the way you're going about <laughs> if one was to go out on loan, then this sounds like a, a more than adequate or and actually if for you to say number one midfielder out of the ones and we're talking about Benton Core who's been on fire mm. that is a big statement and something uh, I would love to see more of yeah look he was probably the best midfielder in Serie A last year maybe over the last couple of years with AC Milan when winning the league um, he got the move to Barcelona on the back of that, which is very impressive, obviously. And um, I just think he offers something a bit different. I think he offers similar qualities to maybe Pierre Mohoibier, where he's a box-to-box -box midfielder. He's really combative in the middle of the park, but he's another level to Hoibier, complete another level to Hoibier. And I think, you know, Hoibier and Bentancourt complement each other yep. so well. So I think Frank Kessier will just be another level over that. There you go. Enough said. Yeah. Enough said. So that's that. But like I said, like I'm very skeptical over the deal and I probably don't think it's going to happen. But if it does happen, it's an absolute steal, especially at 15 million as well.
Uh, let's move on. Let's talk about Piero Hincapié. Tuto Mercato Web say that Antonio Conte has asked the board to sign Bayer Leverkusen defender Piero Hincapié. And I want to get your opinion on this because I know you're a big fan. I am a very, very big fan of this guy. <laughs> um, about six to eight months ago, I can't remember who it was. And if you're watching, uh, put it in the comments, let me know. Someone said to me, watch this guy. He's a youngster, but he's coming through. And this guy has got a big, big future. And I am a big fan of this guy. And if we are to sign him, yes, it's a young one and it's one for the future. But he's doing it, doing very well at Leverkusen. Um, liked what I saw during the World Cup for Ecuador. And these are the kind of young players, like the Kulisevskis and everything, where players like this come along and can they may be youngsters and one for the future, but this guy is a genuine one for the future that can slot in right now and make an impact in that defence. We're just talking about how poor our defence is. This guy makes a huge difference. Yeah. This guy, I would be ecstatic if we signed. Yeah, and he's kind of a bit similar to Romero in terms of how aggressive he is, how on the front foot he is. And to have Romero on the right, him on the left, and someone new in the middle, uh, maybe maybe even a long lay in yeah. the middle, uh, would be absolutely sensational to go into the second half of the season like that. From what I saw in the uh, World Cup from him, I think... Um, He's got a very high ceiling, but he's still very raw yep. at the moment. So I think that if he was to come, I still think we would need to be a bit patient with him. But I would definitely like to see him come through the door. And I think he's a top talent for the future. And I think right now, he can start into the team right now because that's how poor our defence is. But in a few years, you'll really see the fruits of that. Again, completely agreed. I mean, you look at it, we, 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 we said we, we might need to <coughs> this. There's some players that you do need to give time for. Even when you sign big stars, some of them need time to uh, adjust to, to being in the Premier League and being in England. This guy, though, can tick all the boxes. Mm. Um, he's very comfortable on the ball. His passing is good. His aggression and anticipation is, is good. And these are the kind of signings that if we can get him through the door, you can see... Yes, it's young and kind of the model. Like you were speaking a lot about yesterday, how we can do both models, bring in young, but still, this guy is it. Yeah, This I guy agree. is it. I agree. Uh, so that's Hincapié Conte. Apparently, according to Tuto the Mercado Web, has asked the Tottenham board to sign Hincapié, which probably means we'll get Harry Sutar <laughs> from Stoke. But yeah. um, <laughs> that is um, what they're saying. Let's talk about Martin Terrier now, a media foot publication out in France, are saying that Tottenham and Manchester United are keeping tabs on rent attacker Martin Terrier and have contacted his agent for information. Martin Terrier is a top talent out of the French league, can play on the left wing, can play up front as well, scoring bag loads of goals over the last couple of years for Ren. And um, I think he's one who I'd like to see through the door, to be honest. I think he's a really top talent. Any so, opinion? Yeah, no, like I said to you before, I, 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 I'm not, I don't want to really give past judgment on him because I don't know enough about him. Um, what I will reflect back on again is, for me, it's more important we get Hincapié through or players of that ilk in those positions than a player of this position. Mm. Like if, if we can get this Hincapié, let's just say, deal done and, uh, and other, other ones done, if this becomes available near the end of the window we, or there is a chance to do it, then I'm all for it from, from what I'm hearing. But, but I still, I've been saying it the whole time, defenders, we need defenders. And yes, this would be a nice addition, but I think we need to focus on defence mainly. But with the likes of, let's say, Lucas Moura not getting a look in anymore, Conte, uh, from what we're hearing, thinks he's pretty much done at Tottenham yep. and um, his injuries have got the better of him. Do we not need another player um, in the attacking line going forward into the second half of the season? We do. We, we, we do, and I can see that point. And from what I heard yesterday, I think there's murmurs that he's talking to Sao Paulo already about January moves. So uh, that, again could push the need for it um, and Brian Hill as well who he's in the squad but not getting a look at yeah it. this is the thing but that, that when you're saying could we use another player there there is they could say right Brian Hill could play there um, but that, that's what they said first player. half of the season but yeah. Conte doesn't trust him so well, there's no point in being here well this is the thing again but we see again that we've heard so many rumors that we need to sell to buy or sorry get we're gonna update the, the current squad but we need to get so we should see um, if you said to me right now, Hincap or, and I said to you, Hincapié or Terrier, who would you say? I'll say Hincapié, but I want to see both. Yeah. <laughs> we're, 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 everyone we're talking about today, I'd love to see them all. Yeah. It's just when it comes down to, to who are we likely to get uh, or who who will come. And and for me, it's uh, Hincapié. But like I said, if this guy has the chance to come and we need to stock up, like we said with uh, Kessier, with if... Um, if Skip or uh, Sar go out on loan, then you have to address that situation. Yeah. 
Um, in terms of his stats for Wren, he's been three seasons. This is his third season at Wren now. In his first season, 34 games, nine goals, seven assists. Second season, 37 games, 21 goals, Jeez. three assists. And this season, he's uh, done 14 games, eight goals and three assists. Okay, you're now sparking my interest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're now sparking my interest. Listen, and you've got to remember as well, that's in a team with no disrespect to Rods that aren't one of the high-flying French teams. Um, they're always up there and you hear us talking about. They are impressive numbers. Yeah, I mean, he played against us, I think, in the Conference League or the Europa League yep. uh, a year, a few years ago, and he looked pretty impressive. But uh, no, he's definitely one that we should be looking at. Um, 25 years of age as well, so a good age. And I think it probably fits the mould. 25 years of age with that calibre of goal scoring um, records. Um, he probably fits the bill for both to suit the hierarchy's needs and Antonio Conte's yeah. needs. Yeah, you can see two and two making four here. So even if it's speculation all, all the pieces of that jigsaw fit don't they mm, they do but we'll have to see how this one plays out next up let's talk about you guessed it Pedro Porro once again as Simon Phillips who is a Chelsea journalist says that Chelsea plan to sign a new right back in January and Tottenham target Pedro Porro is one of the names on the list and I think I'm getting a bit of PTSD <laughs> talking about everyone that we're linked to and they end up going to Chelsea yep and uh <laughs> Uh, I'm waiting for now. This is pretty much when, as soon as you hear Chelsea come into the fray, it's it's like Romano saying, "Here we go." And um, this is why it's so important to get your targets done and dusted, meet that um, release clause, get the deal done, instead of just talking about it, talking about it, thinking about it, um, observing the player, um, you know, preparing bids and all this kind of stuff. Because once we do that, we just let other teams go and gazump us. And it's not like you can have a bidding war here because. The manager said yesterday there's a release clause you're not getting him unless you match, match his release clause so if he's saying that you're you're literally just inviting other teams to go and get him under your belly under yeah. your finger yeah 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 yeah. as i say during january we need to change our team our, our name from tottenham hotspur to either registering our interest albion or monitoring the situation rovers <laughs> Because that's all we do. Um, There's only and, one hotspot. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, and then things like this happen. We have seen that we we've, we it's not our first rodeo. We've seen this, but the concern is when you hear a team that Chelsea, like Chelsea come in. If you hear it was like an Aston Villa or, uh, or or a team of that elk, then you're like, okay, we're Tottenham Hotspur, we can do it. But when you know it's Chelsea who will pay, who will pay the money, who will pay the fee, who won't negotiate, there you go, that that's done. And what Chelsea can offer them, especially the project, I hate to use that word, project that they're doing under Bowley and, and now Potter, um, you've got to worry. Yeah, and you're seeing Chelsea, you know, making moves. Yep. Every day you're, you're hearing about Chelsea signing someone or heavily linked with someone or going in for someone. I think alone, even in the last week, they've signed, what, two or three players. And it's just like... When are we going to start competing uh, with teams like that on that level? Fine, maybe we don't have the exact same money to spend as them, but there are enough players available, of players in our price range that are good enough quality or more than good enough yep. quality that we can get through the door. And Pedro Porro is one of them. Yep. And this is the thing. You look at Pedro Porro, um, we knew what the release fee was. We had the World Cup. Even with Kessier, why haven't you not done that when Chelsea and Liverpool and all of these people making their move? Why, why is it not signed, still delivered? Um, and what you've got to remember with this as well, Graham Potter right now has probably spent years at Brighton going, this is the kind of player I want. I know we can't afford him. All right, this is a... Right now, he's like, these are the players. The oh, okay. Candy okay, shop, okay here you go. There you go. Well, which one do you want first? And they'll get them. He um, And whether you're, you you want to deem these as Chelsea's club signings or Graham Potter has said, these are the Ilka players I want, we, we'll, we'll never know. But, but the fact that Chelsea are now looking... We all know when Chelsea have been looking at players we've been looking at, which jersey they're normally holding at the end of it. Mm. Well, again, we'll have to see how that one plays out. Let's talk about a couple of outgoings now and let's talk about Pape Matassa. As Calcio Mercato say that Serie A side Salonitana have made contact with Tottenham regarding a pinch potential move for Pape Matassa. And if this is true, it kind of maybe does play into that Frank Kessier thing as well. Yeah, it does. It does. Uh, the one thing I would say with Saar is that. Uh, I want him to stay on loan at England. I really think if he's going to get some uh, a real feel for this game and, uh, and how it's played, he needs to be tested in England. Um, yes, it may be easier to get him out on loan in Europe, um, but I think if you look at the players that are going to go out on loan, I think he is number one on the list that's probably going to get a move away. Um, 
whether he he has a good season it benefits the club with him going abroad we'll wait and see but uh I do like the looks of Saar but he does need to get minutes and I hope they are in England yeah um I know I hope they're in England as well but when when you're looking at Saar and he's made most of his minutes um or professional minutes in the French league at least it's a step up going to the Italian league that's yeah, all that's I can say point. really that's a really good point really really good point so yeah and uh, it's, it's not one of the big hitters. You know he will probably just slot straight in and get regular minutes and play uh, a consistent amount of time and get a proper, proper let's say, five, six months under his belt. So, so it could work. I just wish, that, especially the European players, I just wish these deals happened in the UK, uh, in England. Yeah, what would you rather, though, like him to go to somewhere in England where maybe he's not going to get the most amount of minutes or to go to somewhere like at the bottom of uh, Serie A and play week in, week out every single game? If you gave me those two options, the one that we're talking about right now, mm, where he's going to get regular well. minutes. I'd agree as well. Uh, but let's move on. Let's talk about the last news story of the update, and it's on Brian Hill. And Dan Kilpatrick says that Tottenham remains sceptical of Brian, or Conte remains sceptical of Brian Hill. The Spaniard will have to bulk up before convincing the manager he is ready to play in the Premier League. A loan move back to Spain still feels the more likely outcome. And like we're talking about Pape Matassar, um, the Brian Hill thing, if he does go, the Martin Terrier thing makes even more sense. Yep. Yeah, no, it does. It does. Uh, I think with those could be two and two, but making six. But the, the thing is with Brian Hill... It's not good maths. It, he, 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 exactly. exactly. <laughs> I mean, the, the thing with me, Brian Hill, this is one for me that is vital. And I mean, absolutely vital that he stays in England. Because if, especially when you use those words beefing up and his, his weight and everything, keep going on loans back to Spain or whatever. You're getting used to the Spanish league where your, your build is not a big problem because of the way the football is played out of there um, and how that league is uh, uh, normally the style of football that's played. But he needs to stay in England and get English minutes under his belt, whether it is a, a mid to low... Premier League team or a high, high championship team. This is a guy that if he does have any future and you want to 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 remove those doubts that Conte has, I think the only way you can remove them is him playing in England. Mm. Yeah, I mean, again, I completely agree. I think he needs a loan in England. I've been saying it every time he's gone out yep. on loan uh, from Spurs. Um, but like we're saying, as much as maybe we're sceptical of the hierarchy bringing in players and if players were going to go. If we weren't going to bring in uh, replacements for the Hales and the Pape Matasars uh, coming in, then we probably would have let them go in, in the summer without bringing players in. Yep. So it, it's, it, makes, it gives me a bit more hope if these players are going to leave this January that players are going to come in. Well, the one, the one thing that surprised me is this. When they're talking about his physique and his whatever, it's like, if that's your concern, why aren't you getting him in the gym a lot more? To, to work on that if you remember Gareth Bale Gareth Bale the size and stature he was when we bought him compared to the size and stature he was when we sold him yeah. it was boy to a man stuff and he completely worked on his physique and all that if that's one of the attributes that you're really concerned with set him up with the gym programme yeah. get the nutritionists involved that's what we have the best of the best for and this world class training facility to, to identify these kind of things and get the players to work on them um so yeah, I know I know what you're saying with the thing, with, but with these players going out, what we've seen before, the players go out, and then sometimes we've dillied and dallied so long that the players that work and have come in, those break down, and then we've got a player that's gone out and no replacement. So, so we'll have to see. But yeah, but do you not think there's maybe a, a change in strategy somewhat? Because in the summer we saw us bring in players before we let players go. So, so the the, the only change I saw with last season was whereas we normally go crazy at the end and get all our signings in, we did that the first few... Yeah, and then we started to try and filter out the players. Yes, yeah, then we started trying to filter out the players, but then near the end, it was like the Dan James loans the, yeah. uh, and all that. So it kind of went quiet, and that's when our rivals really started strengthening. It was like what we looked like, and the, the media were all talking about, oh my God, look at Spurs, they mean business this year, they're spending big Richarlis and Basuma, Perisic, blah, blah. But then when you saw the players that the field was signing, Chelsea... Liverpool, everyone was like, oh, wait a minute. Have we strengthened or have we kind of gone ahead? But then they've... So, so that's what worried me. That, the beginning, I was very impressed with and really starting to think, well, maybe, maybe there is a... 
going to be a change of the guard and things will change but by the end i was like oh here we go yeah um it's going to take a lot more windows for me to even contemplate that uh but we shall see all right and just before we go we've actually had an update from ali gold with a few bits and pieces so we'll just cover that before we end the update and the first one from ali gold is tottenham to consider offers for emerson royale hallelujah people muzzled offer, <laughs> simon toffer muzzled offer. <laughs> it says tottenham are willing to consider offers for emerson royale but that means offers need to come in for emerson royale that's for us part. to consider that's the part that's the part but at least it's a start it's a start to say, right, listen, we, we, the manager has said that your days are numbered. Mm. Um, and let's face it, it's been a disaster, this signing. Um, and the quicker we get, uh, we realise that and move on, which has been, which I, it, due to, and I will give Tottenham credit, due to uh, previous, like, that has been one of our problems, hasn't it? We just keep the talent there or, or, or we, we, we struggle or give them new contracts. Now it's just a case we will listen. Just what is that magic number? Yeah. Because it's not going to be the asking price we got. Look, I think, what, we signed him for, what, 25 million or, or something like that. Uh, we signed Undombele for 60, 65 million. We're willing to let him go for less than half that value. So I think, in a sense, Spurs have learned their lesson in, um, a bit in that way, where I think that if a player's not worth it and you know you're not going to get that money, I think they're willing to let them go um, for less than maybe we were hoping to get. But it's just a case of our offers are going to come in for Emerson. I think that Emerson can thrive as a professional footballer in a certain league. I'm not sure if that's... I think he can in the Premier League as well. I just don't think he's suited for a wingback system. And I think if you're asking him to defend first and be a fullback, I think he actually can make a career for himself. Yeah, I, th I think, again, what happened with this, we brought into players a right back in a back four. And then obviously we what happened, got happened, Conte yeah. and, it, what happened, and, and then he's asked to play in a right wing back in the back three listen he's had his moments he's had his moments he's had his hysterical moments he's had his awful moments um, he's also had his good moments as yeah, well yeah there, there, there has been some defensive displays that haven't been too bad um but yeah i think it's time that, that, that this is over like you said we're open to offers <laughs> do we get them honestly yeah. if you were to give me half the value we bought him i would snap your hand off i agree I agree. I think I'll just take anything right yeah. now um, just to get a better right back through the door. Because let's be honest, we ain't signing a right back until one of our right backs leave. Yep. That's just uh, the facts of the matter. Well, let's just hope we don't continue consider, continue the trend since Carl Walker. Aurier, disaster. Doherty has been up and down, uh, but you'd say overall more of a disaster than good. Royale. Then we have Spence, who can't get a game for love nor money, whether it's illness, lack of whatever the reason <coughs> may be. Um, we need to break this curse of the right wing back. To bring in a Porro for 40 million and selling an Emerson for, let's say, 15, 20 million, that's brilliant business, in my opinion. Agreed. So let's hope that can happen. Uh, but last but not least, from Ali Gold, he's talking about Tottenham's attacking targets for this January. And he says Tottenham's forward targets for January include Tete, Harvey Barnes, Ismaili Assar, Wilfred Zaha, and Ruslan Malinovsky. Um, so worth saying that Tete. Um, he plays for Leon at the moment on loan from Shakhtar Donetsk. His contract with Shakhtar runs out 31st of December 2023. So he's probably gettable for um, a fairly achievable fee. His market value on transfer market is currently 25 million, usually deployed as a right winger. I'm just checking for uh, Leon to see where he's played most this season. It is right wing. Uh, 14 games, six goals, three assists, which, which is a pretty good return. Yep. Not bad for a winger. Um, Harvey Barnes, who I know you're a big fan of. Huge. Um, his contract doesn't run out until 2025, so you're probably t talking about a big outlay for someone like Harvey Barnes with his um, market value on transfer market, 32 million. I mean, as a young English player, 20, well, he's not actually that young anymore. He's 25 years of age. Um, you're probably thinking at, at, what, minimum 40, 50 million for him. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you, you said it. There's one name that sticks out to me in a sort of like a sore thumb in that in that uh, list of attacking players, and it is Harvey Barnes, night and day. I think this guy is a real, real talent. And uh, young or young or let's say 25, so the best years are ahead of him. English for the homegrown quarter, explosive pace, um, creative, direct. I would be absolutely ecstatic if this man was to walk through the door. Mm. Um, as well, 
Ismaili Assar from Watford. I mean, had a really good World Cup with Senegal. I thought he was really impressive. Current market value is 22 million with um, his contract expiring 30th of June 2024, so the end of next season. Um, I, for one, would absolutely love him through the door. I think he can play through the middle, can play on the right, can play on the left. Explosive pace, like you're talking about with Harvey Barnes, but this guy's pace is a different level uh, to Harvey Barnes, and I think he's got some real quality in Ismail Yassar. Wilfred Zaha is an interesting one, because 30 years of age, but his contract does uh, run out at the end of the season, so you're talking about a gettable player with a gettable fee. Yep. Um, obviously, he's been central to everything Crystal Palace have done. He's been their talisman for many, many a year. Yep. And um, he's as well. He's one that can play versatile anywhere across the front three. In terms of age, obviously, he's not the demographic that we're looking at. But I think with the fee that maybe you can get him at with the quality that he does have, I think it should be a one that we should definitely be looking at. Uh, if you look at it, uh, what I would say with this list, uh, the, the three people that have been mentioned that play in England would be the first three that I would uh, uh, try. If that was a list that we're working our way down and we're trying to do, I would make a beeline for all the people that played in England. So there's no uh, settling in period. There's no, can they do it in the Premier League? All right, Sars been doing it in the Championship as well. Um, Zaha, one thing you know is he's going to get found a lot. He'll win you a lot of free kicks. And on his day, he's explosive. We need a free um, kick taker, though, to make uh, use of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, but yeah, I, I I wouldn't mind him, but I would put Harvey Barnes and Sarah ahead of him. Mm. I think for me, um, Tete as well, because he's the youngest one on that list at 22 years of age with um, already a market value of uh, 25 million, like I say. Surely um, he's got the opportunity to, to explode as a player at only 22 years of age. Six goals, like I said, three assists this season in only 14 appearances. Uh, predominantly a right winger, so he's actually going to be the one that can provide competition with Kulisevsky. I think he would be a really good option. I think probably him, um, Ismaili Assar and Wilfred Zaha is probably my, front, my first choice. Um, I would happily take any of them. Harvey Barnes, I think... I just think it's a bit out of our, our budget and price range because I think, you're, like I said, minimum of 40, 50 million for him. Um, someone that's not going to come in and, and start straight away. He's going to be a squad player like a Richarlison is. So I think I'd prefer to go for someone like a Zaha, Ismaili Asar, Tete, not as expensive as Barnes, and which leave us uh, more money to go for more defensive targets. So the one thing I will say that, and I can see where you're coming from, but then you, the way I look at it as well, if you look at it, James Madison or Harvey Barnes. All right, they're different positions, but they're both attacking. Harvey Barnes, I think, price-wise, is a lot more obtainable than a James Madison, especially if Newcastle come back in. Hmm. Um, he is the one I've been a, a, a big fan of him for a couple of years now. I just, I, I, he's a player that I would, again, maybe a little bit hard overhead, but I think he's just an incredible player. I really do, and I think he can I do rate him. bits at Spurs. Yeah, I rate him. I think he's a top quality player as well. I really do rate him. First of all, I think Madison is a better player. I prefer yeah, Madison through doubt. the door. Um, but in terms of the man, the outlay that you're going to have to spend and in terms of uh, the qualities that they bring to the team and the holes in the squad, I just feel like um, maybe Tete, Saar and Zaha might be a bit more... Um, more in achievable. line yeah achievable and in line with what we're trying to do i suppose uh, i think i think you're right and the one thing we do know and we've seen Leicester do this a hundred million times they have a price in their head and they say listen he could he could be yours but he's not yours until you pay that money and not a penny less mm. so uh that's where we can waste a lot of time with our our, our low boarding offers our, our trying to negotiate when it could have been time better spent going to get the other ones that I think will be more achievable or obtainable. So, so yeah, I think I think the, the rest of them are more obtainable, but Harvey Barnes is the one I'd want. All right, so there you have it. That is your Tottenham update. Uh, let me know in the comment section below, out of Tete, Harvey Barnes, Ismail Yassar, Zaha and Ruslan Malinovsky, who would you like to see through the door in this January? And would you like to see Emerson Royale uh, being replaced in this January? I think I know the answer to that one. But thank you everyone for joining us today. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on you Spurs. Spurs.